Hey there, this is Teacher Elizabeth with another art tutorial for you. Today we're going to be creating a symbolic self-portrait. What makes a symbolic self-portrait different from a traditional portrait is the portrait's not just about the person's face, like in this Rembrandt self-portrait or in this Van Gogh self-portrait. Instead, with a symbolic self-portrait, objects and colors that symbolize who the person is are composed into a picture. In this example, we're seeing a shoe, a roll of film, and a bag, as well as a spool of thread that symbolizes who the artist is. And then in this next picture, we're seeing shapes, objects, and colors that the artist feels symbolizes them. In addition, the objects and colors tell a story about the person. So as we begin our project today, I'd like to define symbols. Symbol is something that represents or stands for something else. So we've got the clock, a tulip, and an eagle. Each one of these things can represent something individually for a specific person. The clock could represent age, the eagle could represent strength, and the tulip could represent love. And then you can combine these objects together into a picture to tell a story. For example, this Pieter Claes painting is a still life that's full of objects that symbolize death or change as a reminder of the transience of life. So you can have objects represent a story or you can have more of a literal translation of a story, like the story of Saint Basil that's shown in this icon. Stories of his life are illustrated in those cells surrounding him as the central figure. We'll be using this icon of Saint Basil as a template for our symbolic self-portraits. In the center, you are going to place what you think represents you the most, what symbolizes you the best. And then surrounding that center, you're going to talk about where you're from, where you live now, what your dreams are, what your goals are, and all of these combined together are going to create your symbolic self-portrait. Now before we begin, I need to make sure you have all the art supplies you will need. You will need two pieces of paper, colored pencils, a pencil, and a ruler. To begin, please take out one of those pieces of paper and answer these five questions. Number one, where were you born and what is your favorite memory of your first home? Number two, what is a dream you have about something you want to do? Number three, what is a goal you hope to achieve? And number four, what do you love about where you are right now? Number five, what specific thing about you makes you feel like you? Please write down the answers to each one of those questions. Here are some examples of me answering those questions. I was born in Colorado and my favorite first memory of home were the geese in our front yard. My second answer is the dream I have is to go on an African safari. My third answer about the goal I want to achieve is I'd like to get a big giant public art commission. And the answer to the fourth question is my house. It's what I love about where I live now. And the fifth question about what specific thing makes me feel like me, it's got to be being an artist. Please pause the video and take your time coming up with these answers. All right, now we're going to move on in this creative ideation process. Now, next to each one of the answers to these questions, I want you to write down something that you picture in your mind that parallels with your answer. For example, when I talked about my front yard, immediately I could see the mountain range across the street from where I lived. I could also see the geese. Now for the second question, the picture that pops in my mind when I think of an African safari are giraffes in the Serengeti. And then a goal I hope to achieve with the art commission, I see abstract colored design. The fourth question, the picture in my mind is just my house, doesn't have to be too complicated. And then for the fifth question about being an artist, what does that look like? That looks like paint brushes dripping with paint to me. The first thing we're going to do is draw the template that each of these images is going to fit inside of, similar to the St. Basil painting, but more simple. So I want you to draw 
a vertical rectangle in the center of your paper and then four diagonal lines coming off that rectangle. Inside each one of those shakes, I want you to draw the answers to each of those questions. I placed my first question at the top with the geese and the mountains showing my front yard from when I was growing up. After that, I moved to the center box that is the number five question. And I want to show you how you can print images out and then trace them that keeps you from having to freehand draw. So because I wanted paint brushes with paint on them, I just found them on the internet, printed them out, and now what you're seeing me do is creating do-it-yourself graphite paper. I put pencil lead on the back of the picture, then flip the picture over so the picture's facing up, and then trace it. When you do this, you get a direct transfer of the picture. And now what you're seeing me do is just trace over the transfer that I made. Next, instead of freehand drawing the giraffe, I went ahead, printed the picture out, cut it out, put pencil on the back, placed it on my paper where I wanted it, traced over it, and now what you're seeing me do is detailing out the transfer. It's a great easy way to give you specifically what you want without having to freehand draw it. Moving on to the tree, I did the exact same thing. I cut the picture out, put the graphite pencil on the back, and then traced over it. You may have to fold it and arrange it to get it placed where you want, but it's easy enough to figure out. Now, for the Public Art Commission for the goal in life, all I'm doing is using a ruler and creating a bunch of diagonal lines that later on I'm going to color in. That abstract design represents the Public Art Commission that I want to get. Now, the last part is just drawing my house. I just drew a very simple structure. My house happens to be very simple. And after I add a few windows and the chimney and the front steps, I'll just go for a tree on the left and a tree on the right. Please keep this as easy as it can be. You can also trace, remember that. You can trace anything, you don't have to freehand it. Now the last thing I'm adding is I want to put paint dripping off of those paint brushes. I had forgotten to do that. So I'm adding that at the end. So I've got droplets of paint and then a pool of paint underneath the brushes. Now it's time for color. You are going to color in your symbolic self-portrait any way you want to. I just want to show you how to make a transition of color. So I'm transitioning from a yellow to a yellow orange. I put the yellow down first, then I lightly put some orange on top of the yellow, and then I put the yellow back on top again. It gives it a little bit of a transition of color without being too severe. The rest of the picture, I just colored in however I felt, and you're going to do the same exact thing. Thank you so much for taking the time to be creative today. I hope your symbolic self-portrait was something that gave you inspiration and made you feel good. Please share what you've made with us and be well. Thank you.